This is Joe here. I'm going to show you uh, how I'm going to make a kite. This is the tool we use to cut it. It's a hot knife, soldering iron with a chisel tip. Um, one of the difficulties working with this ripstop nylon is it is extremely slippery. You can hardly hold on to it. So, one of the tools that you use is glue. We're going to run a bead of glue along here. And yeah, you're going to get it all over you, but that's just part of the consequence of having to work with ripstop nylon. I'm using cardboard here as my pattern. I started this out with a uh, bamboo skewer here. So we're going to just kind of smudge it along. Started this out with the finished dimensions and uh, enlarged a little bit with the blue tape. And then I cut with a hot knife to the outside edge here. And the inside edge is supposed to be the finished size. But I uh, added a little color band in here and the consequence of that was it shrunk it so it has shrunk it about uh, half an inch. Okay, so I got my skewer here. Now, where I used the hot knife, it kind of glued that down, so I'm going to loosen it up here. I left it there glued down while I was doing that just because it's uh, so slippery. So I fold it over and pin it. And I like to use the skewer. I cut it flat like a spatula. And that holds my tension on the fabric a little bit. And if I need to move the glue around, I can do that as well with my skewer. Um, I have two layers of cardboard here because I didn't want to go through the kitchen table. Um, but you do need to be cautious when putting your pins in that you don't go too deep. And you use lots of pins, and they do get covered with glue, so you may have to clean them or replace them depending on if your wife finds that. This one's going to be the tricky one. <clears throat> and we'll probably have to kind of miter this corner a little bit, but we're going to kind of ignore it for a minute. And we'll come back and fix it once it wants to stay down. I'm using a lot of pins. If I wasn't so lazy, I would have run to the store and got more. Feel free to put the pin in and move it because it's easy to do. And I have pinned the kite sail to the marks so that I can keep it square, or in this case, trapezoidal. And I'm just about out of pins, so let's see what we can do here. What I'm trying to do is keep my hem 
going to go ahead and press this. Got to use a pressing cloth, and the pressing cloth will be garbage when you're done because it leaves glue all over it. So I'm using a disposable pressing cloth. And it is pressing. We're not sliding that iron. We're trying to push it down. Now, if I'm careful with my plaid, I can line up on one line and uh, see where I'm going. So I end up with my pressing cloth running all the way down the, the edge. I like to think of this as a flying because basically what we are doing is the same techniques used in piecing a quilt together. So 
going to go ahead and press it one more time here. moving it. If I get right next to it and press, pull the pin and pick up the iron and move it. And press and pull the pin and pick up the iron and move it. Pull the pin. hear the glue bur gurgling down there. Okay, let's see how that looks. Up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. Should let it cool a little more. that's good enough. We're ready for the next layer of glue. You can see that glue doesn't stay in there super well. It's just a temporary hold.